In this video, I'm going to teach you my very best pro-level tips on teleprompting and video production. Hi, I'm Krista, and teleprompters are my passion. Every day, I'm fielding questions for optical beam splitter mirrors for high-profile clients. If you want to achieve teleprompter mastery, you want to watch this video in full and make it a study, something that you're always perfecting. The secret to all of my perfectly delivered lines is a big TV screen and a big beam splitter mirror. Right behind me, I have two Samsung displays. One is just a standard setup TV, not mirror flipped in any way. And then right next to it, I have the same display modified so we can use it as a teleprompter. I have my camera set up over here with the display exposed so you can see what I'm seeing through the mirror and what the camera is seeing actually. Okay, so I'm going to test it out reading directly from this teleprompter glass so you can see how my eyes look, am I looking straight at the camera, and then also the display quality. Alright, let's get it going. Today, I'm going to reveal to you my top tips from my experience working with teleprompters all day long. The secret to all my perfectly delivered lines is having a big display and a big beam splitter mirror. I don't have the time or the patience to mess with badly written teleprompter software or figuring out how to get specialized input devices to work. I'd rather spend my time creating killer content. I simply write my script in Word or PowerPoint and then just plug it into the big screen and go. This also eliminates spending any time rehearsing over and over again, making sure the scroll rate is perfect. I'm sure you can relate. With a PC, I'm able to use a variety of different input devices, of my favorite being the presenter remote, or having my cameraman simply press page down. I've heard so many stories from customers who are frustrated trying to find compatible software with their device or their teleprompter, and it's just a big mess. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm James, engineer and cameraman for Teleprompter Mirror. I freaking love this system because it makes my job as a video producer and editor so much easier. I can write a fast script for Krista, and she can deliver it smoothly without missing any key information. Back to you, Krista. Great show! When using a presidential teleprompter, you want to make sure you adjust the height so your eyes meet up with the middle of the mirror. That way, you're able to read it comfortably off the glass. Now that we have it fully set up, let me just take you through each piece. We have the mount down here that's holding the display, and that's just two parts, the display and the tray. And then we have the presidential up here. So it has the beam splitter glass, 16 by 16 inches, and the stand for the presidential. Now I wanna show you what I see. So I'm really close, so if you were recording through the mirror, you'd be getting a nice frame of your face, or you could back up if you need to and still see the text. But check out how big that text is. Whoa, that's so easy to read. Now 
Now I'm going to show you exactly how I deliver a speech, as well as how to record through the beam splitter mirror with flawless picture quality. I know you want more of this. I have more great information coming your way as a sequel to this video. So hit that subscribe button right now. Now picture me on stage. Okay, so I've positioned it perfectly so I can see all of the text that's on the display. Today, I'm going to reveal to you my top tips from my experience working with teleprompters all day long. The secret to all of my perfectly delivered lines is to have a big display with a big beam splitter mirror. As you can see from my text here, when I made the video that you're watching right now, I improvise in addition to reading my lines. I don't have time or patience to mess with badly written teleprompter software or figuring out how to get specialized input devices to work. I have a lot of clients asking about multilingual teleprompters and whether or not certain software allows characters, which is a huge problem if you're using other languages. But with this setup, you can actually use any software you want. So you can write in your native language and just present it on the screen just as you see it on your laptop, which is amazing. So you guys may be wondering, how the heck did I flip my screen in a mirror image? Let me tell you. If you already have a TV that you just need to flip, we have a special device called the HDMI mirror box, and it flips any screen when you plug it into a laptop. All you have to do is plug in an HDMI cord, and it flips it automatically. Super simple and easy to use. Now I'm going to show you how to set up your camera for recording through presidential teleprompter. We include a special shroud to black out the back so you get that amazing video quality straight through the glass. All right, let's get going. Today, I'm going to reveal to you my top tips from my experience working with teleprompters all day long. Let me take you through everything you're going to need for the setup. First, you need a large display. So you can get our display that's already pre-flipped that you can just plug right in with your HDMI cord to your laptop. Or you can go with any TV that you already have that has HDMI input and simply use the HDMI mirror box. That flips any display without special software. Once you have the larger display, you'll need a presidential teleprompter, or for DIY projects, you can simply get the mirror. If you're just getting the mirror, you need to figure out what size you need. And I know this is a common problem. So to figure this out, I recommend setting up your monitor where you plan to be recording, and then grab any standard mirror that you already own and adjust it, set it up like you would the presidential, and then step back where you will be standing, right? And see how much screen space you really need. And then outline that on the mirror and you'll be able to figure out exactly how big the mirror needs to be to see the entire screen. Once you have the presidential teleprompter, which is basically the glass, and a way to mount that glass so it's standing up and the monitor, you need camera equipment if you're recording through the glass. So I recommend getting a tripod and a DSLR camera to put separately behind the mirror along with a black shroud to black out all those extra reflections that are coming in from the room. This will give you that flawless display quality coming through so your videos look amazing. 
they don't even look like you're actually recording through anything. It's like recording through thin air. Let me tell you a few other reasons why I love this setup. The monitor itself that we're using is high contrast, so it's easy to read the text on the screen, and the font size is completely adjustable because you can use any software, and pretty much every software allows you to make the font bigger, like Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. So that's just amazing. So you could be at any distance. So, I love it also because you can be further away from your teleprompter and your camera so you can get more range of motion. You can capture your body language and see just, you can make better videos from being further away. Another interesting feature about using a larger display with a larger mirror is that you can actually put your camera further away from the mirror and still be able to record through it without capturing the edges of the teleprompter in your video. I know, I didn't think about that either until someone actually commented on that <laughs> as a problem. User error. What? With this setup, you don't have to feel rushed. You can simply look further down on your teleprompter and read your next lines without feeling like everything's just going to disappear. So you can relax and read more comfortably using a larger display. You could even hook up a foot pedal if you wanted to still scroll on your teleprompter without using your hands. So you could be giving that nice body language and still scroll very discreetly. The main reason people are using teleprompters is to eliminate mistakes while recording. So you can make videos faster and easier without having to re-record, do double takes over and over again. But most teleprompters actually do the opposite for you. Because the screen's so small, you're so stressed out as you're reading that you're going to miss something and it actually creates more mistakes than it would if you just memorized your lines. For that reason, I like the larger area so I don't feel rushed and I can slow down, make less mistakes, and be more precise with what I'm recording. By the way, if you are loving this video and the information that I'm including here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the sequel where I go in depth with even more tips and tricks on teleprompting. We're gonna share with you some super exclusive insider tips about these outdoor teleprompters. Exactly. So when you're outside and you're teleprompting, you fall into two main categories. Either one, you're recording through the mirror with a camera to make a video. Or in scenario number two, you are delivering a live speech on a stage and you're outside. So if you're stuck in scenario one and you're recording with your camera through the glass, but you need to make sure you're using a black shroud when you're teleprompting outside. So you can see your text crisp and you're not getting any weird reflections from the sun. In scenario number two, when you're delivering that live speech, you want a mirror that doesn't need a shroud for two reasons. You wanna be able to connect to that audience. So you wanna be able to see through the mirror even when it's super sunny outside and number two, you want that nice reflection so you can actually see what you're saying, so you can read your lines and deliver it flawlessly. And you don't have a standard mirror in front of you like Trump or Obama. Trump? Yeah, it's Trump, I and, think. And you can't even see him. <laughs> yeah, they're using a standard mirror and that creates this huge disconnect with the audience, which is terrible. And right now we're out in the field at this park and we have two teleprompters. We have the presidential with the standard teleprompter glass and we have another presidential but with the outdoor teleprompter glass. Woo! And so the outdoor teleprompter glass, as you saw in a previous video, it is super reflective.
reflective so you get that nice crisp test. Whoa, look how amazing that looks. You get to see the audience and the text at the same time. And on the right here, we have the presidential with the nice clear glass. Super obvious, but nice. Ooh. Notice the text isn't quite as readable in an outdoor condition. I mean, this one's way easier to read than that one. I think so too. Like that one, I just see the tree behind it. This one, I see my text. Hello there. I did not see you come in. <laughs> I was too busy reading off this teleprompter. It does some pretty cool things. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you come in. I was too busy reading off this teleprompter. It does some pretty cool things. For example, you can edit the text right on the page. It'll even save it for you. All right, so after seeing these two out in the field, I realized this one's definitely more for recording through the mirror where you can really put that shroud behind so you can see the text. That's my pro tip of the day. And if you really want to be able to read your text while you're outside, then I would totally recommend this one because I get a, a clear picture. I can see exactly what I need to say. All right guys, so I know you want more of this. Yes, you should totally check out our website, like and subscribe our YouTube channel. And don't forget to leave a comment. 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 Today, I'm going to share with you exactly how to avoid painful mistakes with a teleprompter and delivering your lines flawlessly. Here are some of the best questions that I've been asked by my clients and customers. Hmm. Why do I need this when I have a teleprompter? How can I kick ass with a teleprompter? Teleprompters have two different uses. Either you're giving a live speech or you're recording a video. The key thing when you're recording through the glass is you want to put the camera behind it and cover with a black shroud. This allows you to eliminate those extraneous reflections. And when you're giving a live speech, you actually want two presidential teleprompters set up. This widens your view and you're not putting one teleprompter right in front of your audience. You get to put them on the side and everyone's happy. You can see the entire stage and make that amazing eye contact. A teleprompter allows you to write a detailed script beforehand. So when you get up there and you're delivering it live, you know what you're doing. Or if in the case of a video, you don't have to do so many takes. You can do one take and deliver it flawlessly on the first try. Okay. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you come in. I was too busy reading off this teleprompter. And this helps you deliver your lines faster. You can record without having as much useless footage. And on stage, if you've practiced and you're comfortable using the teleprompter, then you are gonna kick ass. When delivering speeches, lectures, or advertisements, the talent typically expects the script to be ready for them. And this is great for a number of reasons, but more specifically, if you're hiring someone to be the face of your video, you don't wanna waste precious time with doing retakes. You wanna get your money's worth. So teleprompting makes a ton of sense because they can deliver their lines flawlessly, accurately, and efficiently, for sure. Okay guys, I've already scripted the next three videos with exclusive subscriber-only content. Hit that subscribe button right now. Other speech applications include politicians and live broadcasts, where the teleprompter functions as a security blanket in case they forget their lines or their information. By the way, a teleprompter can be extremely helpful when you're going live. It's weird because when you're up close next to someone and you see the contouring, you're like, wow, I look fantastic. This is because you can actually plan out some of your information beforehand while interacting with your audience, of course. And this helps you so you're not flubbing up on camera in front of millions of people.
Do I really need a shroud to black out my camera from the back? And the answer is yes, you need to somehow black out the back. And typically this is done with a black shroud or cloth to eliminate those extraneous reflections. But if you're a professional and you have a studio setup, you could simply use a black cloth on the ceiling to get that same effect without actually having to cover the camera. I have my camera set up over here with the display exposed so you can see what I'm seeing through the mirror. And what the camera's seeing, actually. Okay, so I'm gonna test it out reading directly from this teleprompter glass so you can see how my eyes look. Am I looking straight at the camera? And then also the display quality. All right, let's get it going. Today, I'm going to reveal to you my top tips from my experience working with teleprompters all day long. The secret to all my perfectly delivered lines is having a big display and a big beam splitter here. I don't have the time or the patience to mess with badly written teleprompter software or figuring out how to get specialized input devices to work. I'd rather spend my time creating killer content. How does teleprompter glass compare to a glass two in here? Glad you asked. Well, notice right away, the glass two-way mirror I have in my hands is very reflective and very dark. So, more specifically, it's 70% reflective and only 11% transparent. So you're losing almost all of that display quality coming through the mirror. But with the teleprompter glass, it's optically neutral and it's pretty much the opposite in terms of specifications. It's 70% transparent, not 11%, and it's 30% reflective. So you can read your text clearly, but it's not obstructing your view or your video. What is the purpose of an anti-reflective coating on the backside of a teleprompter mirror? The anti-reflective coating is there to prevent the double image of the text and to eliminate some of those extraneous reflections when you're recording. But what it ultimately does is it makes it easy for you to read the teleprompter. The text is nice and crisp with no double image. What are some advantages of using a black backdrop versus a green backdrop? Hi there, I'm Krista, weather girl for Teleprompter Mirror. And today, it's looking like it's a very sunny day with a slight chance of hurricanes and tornadoes. The most popular backdrop is white, and that's because most websites now are white. And if you're making an informational video for your website, you can embed it directly on the page and it just syncs up with the rest of that page. For instance, if you have a black website, then you would want a black background in your video to have it align with the content. Other popular colors include black, slate gray, and chroma key, aka the green backdrop. But actually, there's two types of chroma keys, which I just found this out. <laughs> there's a green chroma key, which is the most typical, but for those people that have green eyes, they have to switch to the blue chroma key, and vice versa. For blue eyes, they would go with green. Because when you go into the editing, you don't want to be editing out their eye color. That would just be nuts. <laughs> hey guys, it's James, cameraman and mastermind of Teleprompter Mirror. I just want to take you through some of the popular screen options and why you might want to use them. Now, when I was first going to film a Krista, we were thinking of the white background. Everybody pretty much these days has a white background on their website, uh, which is all well and good, but you want to stand out. So what better way if you're going to use like vivid colors and LEDs than with a black background? Then I got to thinking, okay, I really want to have some scenes where we're going different places and I want to just have like some crazy humor going on behind her. Well, so I got thinking the chroma key. Okay, back to you, Krista. 
I would say the most advantageous background to have is a chroma key because you can teleport yourself anywhere. You can change your background to any color you want. But for example, if you're going to Las Vegas or you already went and you're recording a video and you forgot a key piece of information in your hotel and you wanted to record it there, well, you can still record it there on your green backdrop, your chroma key. This is huge for news broadcasts and sports teams, anything on TV where they're doing live information because, I mean, you know the weather, man. He's like, it's, whoo, it's slightly cloudy today. And then suddenly it's like clouds are forming in the background. Well, they do that with a chrome key background. That's how they make those dynamic backgrounds possible. Why do you use crazy humor in your videos? It's called a pattern interrupt. Yes, I'm doing it on purpose. It's getting dark. The lights are coming out. This is because the average person that's watching a video will only watch for a few seconds. So you better be funny. Otherwise, they're going to click away almost immediately. It's also known as entertainment. People are watching videos because they want to be entertained and they don't want to read an article. And through humor, I have increased my retention rate in videos from about one minute watch time to 18 minutes plus, which blows my mind. But it's pretty much because of the humor. What are some other things you can use in your videos? Some of my favorites are B-roll footage, workout videos, dancing, story time, opinions, martial arts, musical instruments. I spend so much time with my cameraman planning out all of our different prop and scene ideas to really break up a video. And then my cameraman makes it a reality by putting it into my scripts. How can I flip my display to show a mirror image? There are so many ways to get this done. And most people think you have to use special teleprompter software, but that's just not true. In fact, I recommend not using teleprompter software. You can use a TV that is mirror flipped, our teleprompter TV, or in my past videos, I've talked a lot about the HDMI mirror box, which it has one function, which I love, and you just plug it in, super simple, plug it in, press a button, and it flips anything. So you can use PowerPoint, PDFs, anything that's on your laptop screen, you can use because it just flips the entire screen around. Mind blown. I also really love Chrome plugins. You could use Flip This to do the mirror image along with Dark Reader to turn any website into a black background with white text for teleprompter use. You could even program your own website and do a CSS flip to turn it around. Super simple, easy to do, but you have to have a website. What are the best ways to control my teleprompter? There are so many input devices on the market, I couldn't list them all here. I recommend going on Amazon, but some of my favorites include this Logitech presenter remote, or using a foot pedal, especially if you're recording on your own and you need to continue scrolling and you're a one man crew. You can scroll and just keep recording. Can I use teleprompters for music, lyrics, or guitar tabs? The answer is yes, you can. When musicians are creating music videos, they're often using several different camera angles. Having that one camera angle behind your teleprompter so you can make direct eye contact while reading your music is so powerful. You can also use gimbals and drones to enhance your video but there's nothing quite like direct eye contact. I'm going to show you an example of how you would use teleprompters with your music via the Ultimate Guitar website. So as you can see here, I have the guitar music up and then you just simply hit space to scroll. You can also auto scroll. And that gives you a nice, comfortable pace when you're reading your, 
your guitar. What would you recommend if I want to use it outside? And what about recording through it? Well, there's two main options. If you're actually recording through the glass, you still want to get the teleprompter mirror in the 30R70T, as seen here. But when you take it outside, you definitely want to put a black shroud on the back to cover the camera. That way, you can read your text and you still get that amazing display quality. However, if you're doing a live speech outside, I recommend the outdoor teleprompter. It is super reflective, so you get that nice, crisp text. Whoa, look how amazing that looks. You get to see the audience and the text at the same time. And on the right here, we have the presidential with the nice clear glass super obvious but nice. This is great because it is much more reflective. So you're getting a clearer text from the teleprompter without having to put any shroud on it. What does your studio space look like? Well, as you can see here, I have a black background and it's actually held up with some black gaffer tape so it doesn't damage the paint on the walls. That allows me to record with mirrors and not get crazy reflections. That's the advantage of this setup. But also I have a green screen, the chroma key. This allows me to use any background. I can turn this green screen into the super Himalayas or downtown Chicago. I can do anything I want on this side, which is Amazing! Up top I also have a black cloth and that also helps eliminate those extraneous reflections. With a green screen, I can always be on vacation. What gear do you use? Right now I'm using two oversized presidential teleprompters. They're featuring an 18 by 18 inch beam splitter glass with rounded corners. This allows me to use these 32 inch Samsung displays and I can see the entire display in the mirror. To connect these two displays, I have an HDMI splitter coming from my laptop. That way, when I scroll, I'm not controlling two different scroll wheels. They're both connected, so I'm always on the right page. How do you write fast scripts? I don't use teleprompter software because it actually goofs up my tempo and I make more mistakes when using it. I simply use Microsoft Office. This allows me to pre-format my text with the black background and white text, but I can also add extra colors and bullet points to emphasize a certain point so I don't forget what to say and how to say it. I also like to copy paste my Word document into um, like an HTML editor or even some browser software. But most of the time I'm streaming it directly from my laptop directly to these screens using the Microsoft Word. Between scenes, I audibly speak the subject matter or the scene number. So as soon as I'm done making the videos, I go in and organize and label based on the subject. That makes editing super fast. I have so many techniques that I want to show you in detail about software and hardware that I have to make a sequel to this video. Hit subscribe right now so you don't miss it. Okay guys, that wraps up my question and answer. Now for my next killer lesson. What are the biggest mistakes that people make when purchasing and using teleprompters? Mistake number one, buying one that's not portable. You can have a large pro level setup like this one and it's still extremely portable and fast to set up. Mistake number two, buying one that's too portable. I know what you may be thinking. You want to go with a small gadget that you can just fit in your pocket and you can teleprompt when you're on the go. 
and they're super cute. But imagine trying to read that teleprompter from any distance other than selfie mode. Pretty much not gonna happen. <laughs> so for that reason, I recommend going somewhere in between. If you're not actually walking around while you're teleprompting, you could go with a larger setup and it's still very portable. I just want something that works. I don't want to be squinting to see a tiny little cell phone screen when I'm making my videos. Mistake number three, buying a teleprompter that always tips over. In my setup here, I have a huge screen. So I set up an extra stand for that screen by itself. And I also have a separate stand for my camera, my EOS 1DX Mark II. That way, there's no risk of it falling down. Mistake number four is buying one that only works with an iPad. I don't know if you noticed this, but anything Apple related is very hard to sync up with anything else. How do you get your script into your iPad to begin with? And then once you have it on your iPad, how do you play it on your teleprompter? I don't like to mess with that. I just want to get straight to recording and messing around with all these fancy devices. It's just not for me. Mistake number five is buying cheap teleprompter glass that does not have the anti-reflective coating. Teleprompter mirrors are not all created equal. This one right here has the anti-reflective coating on the back, and it's extremely color neutral with a very nice reflection. Here's an example for you. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you come in. I was too busy reading off of my teleprompter. Some of the other teleprompter mirrors on the market don't have that coating, and then when they go to read their text, they're seeing a double image. Mistake number six is not having a dedicated studio space. You can mess up your entire video with a bad background. Take a little time, or a lot of time, to set up a space where you can make your videos and have them look very professional. Okay guys, here's my next pro tip. When setting up your green screen, there are a few things to keep in mind. First and foremost, you want great lighting. And that means diffusing that light so you're not casting any crazy shadows on your green screen. It's going to make it really difficult to edit when you go into your software to change out that background. So here's an example of a light diffusion umbrella. And it is kind of magical how when you turn it like this to do the light diffusion, just makes it much better. So when you stand in front, you aren't casting any shadows. Another thing to note though, if you're too close to the green screen, you will still cast a shadow. So just take one step forward, take a look back there, are you casting any shadows on it? If so, maybe move up a little bit more. Perfect. Now that you have the lighting resolved, you want to keep in mind too, when you're getting your first green screen, or maybe you're upgrading your equipment, you want to stay away from the Muslim green screen chroma key setup and definitely go straight to the paper. This allows you to go with a larger area, which is critical when you're making a video. You don't want to move your arm out and then have it like be outside of the green screen. You want to be able to move around, be comfortable, and have it be seamless. Most people get a support system for their chroma key background. For our setup, we actually taped our chroma key background to the wall to maximize our space in the studio. For larger setups, when you have tons of space, it may not be a big deal, but just keep in mind, when you're getting a support system, you wanna make sure it supports the weight evenly so it's not wrinkling as you pull it down and then pull it back up to put it away. Mistake number seven is using a device that's too small. Let me show you the limitations of a little teleprompter. Okay, so this means it's super portable. It's your beam splitter. This is your phone. And when you put them together, it creates a little teleprompter. It's like a mini one, right? You can maybe see one line of text. Can't read ahead. You can't be very far away. So you would really need the teleprompter to be right in front of you to be able to actually use it. 
And this might work if you have it on a selfie stick and you're walking around with it, but that's about it. Now we talked about this earlier with portability, but just in general here, you want something that's big. The bigger the better, because the bigger the screen is, the more easily you can read off of that teleprompter. And more importantly, you can start reading it to your next lines because it's all on the screen in front of you. With small devices, you can only go one or two lines at a time, and that leads to more mistakes. Mistake number eight is reading directly off of your teleprompter word for word. It's super obvious that you're doing it, and on top of that, when you're reading it word for word, you're not really thinking about how you're conveying that message. You want to appear more natural. So I recommend pulling into your teleprompter, utilizing some of the words, get some bullet points down, and then make it look natural. You don't always have to be looking directly at the text. Now I'm going to show you an example of what it's like to read word for word off of a teleprompter instead of looking at your bullet points and then improvising. In this video, I'm going to teach you my very best pro-level tips on teleprompting and video production. Teleprompters are my passion. I spend hours every day fielding questions about beam splitter mirrors. For high profile clients, and creating videos like this one. Next, I'm going to show you what it's like to use your bullet points or your script to paraphrase and not read word for word what's in front of you on your teleprompter. Hi, I'm Krista, and teleprompters are my passion. Every day, I'm fielding questions for optical beam splitter mirrors for high profile clients. By the way, in case you're wondering, I work for a beam splitter manufacturing company called Teleprompter Mirror. Mistake number nine is not recording in 4K. I can't tell you how many times I've surfed YouTube and come across the most epic video, and then I blow it up onto my big screen at home, and it's pixelated because it was recorded in 480p. What? If you want to appear professional in your videos, you need to be recording in 4K. Otherwise, your competition is going to see that and they will instantly make a better version in 4K. Mistake number 10 is not using 60 frames per second in your videos. I always record in 60 frames because I love using slow motion. So to emphasize different parts of my video, I slow it down. And if you do that with anything other than 60 frames, it's not going to look good. It's going to look super blurry. Mistake number 11 is bad sound quality. You can ruin an entire video if you don't have a great sound quality in the video. Personally, I have this studio space set up because at work, there were all these extraneous sounds and you could hear people cutting glass in the background or manufacturing this equipment and that's just not good. It's not professional. You want something crisp and clear. I also mute all of my devices while I'm recording, so I'm not interrupted mid-video sequence. This is killer, especially if you're busy like me. Mistake number 12 is being too close to your teleprompter. When you're reading directly on your teleprompter and you're too close to it, you can see your eyes darting back and forth. To fix this problem, you need to step back, get a bigger beam splitter glass so people can't tell that your eyes are moving back and forth to read. Mistake number 13 is wasting time. You don't need to spend too much time rehearsing your lines because your teleprompter is there to save you. Mistake number 14 is speaking in a bad voice or monotone, boring. You want to use your voice as an instrument 
orchestrated. You want to take people on a journey, a sound, a music video almost, with your voice. You want people to feel engaged as you're talking. If you speak in a monotone, this is what happens. Like, I'll do it right now. Bad boys. Use your voice as you would an instrument. Use a monotone is like hitting the same note. I can't even do it because I'm programmed to not do it. <laughs> Here's an example of what not to do. Wasting time. Don't waste time rehearsing your lines unless you're giving a political speech or news broadcast. Your teleprompter will be there to remind you of what to say. You don't need to rehearse too much. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me tell you a story. Back in college, I actually had a lot of trouble with public speaking. And my professor's number one recommendation was actually to slow the F down. Now, mind you, I was getting a bachelor's degree in mathematics. So I was presenting math, high level math, to an audience that had not done the research that I'd done. So when I used his suggestion of slowing down, I, I did it, right? And as a result, everyone afterward came up to me and said, wow, what a great job. Like I was able to follow you and it didn't seem too slow. In fact, if you slow down more than you think you should, just take it even further, go slow even more down. That's actually a comfortable level for people to get that information and follow what you're saying. Mistake number 15 is being boring. You don't want to be boring in your videos. You want to use big body language. You want to use the colorful voice. You want to bring in some action words, different camera angles, looking directly into the camera. Use everything in your toolbox to make it fabulous. Mistake number 16 is changing up your look too much. <laughs> If you're wearing similar clothing in most of your videos, you can reuse that footage and it will make sense. People won't be like, WTF, your hair color changed. Or, oh, like your shirt just changed in mid video. For that reason, I recommend wearing the same thing for every video. <laughs> in fact, I can recall one of the first videos I ever made, I wore the same thing and I had multiple versions of this, but I wore the same dress for an entire month because I was in the middle of making a video and I didn't have an entire day to do it. I only had like a half an hour a day at most to work in some new scenes and that translated into wearing the same outfit. Super useful though. We finally got the video done and it's one of the biggest hits. Mistake number 17 is keeping your audience entertained. You want to use some crazy props. You want to get some amazing outfits and spice up your background. So for instance, you could be going outside to different locations, get some drone footage in your backyard or out in the botanical gardens. All right, so after seeing these two out in the field, I realized this one's definitely more for recording through the mirror where you can really put that shroud behind so you can see the text. Just take it somewhere, make it interesting. I love surfing on Amazon to get the most unusual things like costumes and wigs and different prop items like glowing lips and light up drumsticks. I love to make it fun. Mistake number 18, bad grooming and style. It took a lot of experimentation to find my best look. Hey Daphne, great show. But it definitely pays off. If you work a little bit on your appearance, you will be much more happy with your videos and you'll always look your best. Mistake number 19, low batteries. I can't tell you how many times I've had to waste time charging after I started recording because one of my devices was dead. You can avoid that frustration 
by checking all of your devices, your phone, your drones, your DSLR camera, your gimbals, making sure everything is charged the day before a big shoot. And my cameraman always double checks to make sure these things are charged to save that extra time. Mistake number 20, bad device settings. I've gone through an entire photo shoot or video with the wrong settings before, where I thought we were recording in 4K, and in fact, it was only 1080p. And then, what do you do with that? Do you have to re-record everything, or do you settle for the bad quality? I don't know. I'm gonna give you just one example on one of my devices of what can go wrong with your settings. So when you click on settings in your camera, right at the top here, it goes right into the rear camera. And I've made the mistake of clicking picture size thinking I'm editing my video quality size. But that is not the case. However, I max it out anyway. Then I go to video size and select the highest quality. UHD 60 frames per second. Notice at the top, after you click it, it says video size for the rear camera. So that's the one I am using. It is the correct one. You can set different settings for the front camera. So make sure you have the right one selected. Mistake number 21 is bad lighting. Some of my best shots are taken at twilight where it's the perfect time of day. The clouds don't necessarily have to be there, but the sun has set, right? It's not in direct contact with you. Why'd you have to go and drive me so crazy? Now I'm feeling lost without you and I just can't be without you, baby. And that eliminates all the shadows that you see when you get the direct sunlight. And the same can be said in a studio space. You want to set up your lights with the umbrellas so you don't have any harsh shadows. You also want to make sure that you have sufficient lighting in your room so that your footage isn't grainy. When you kick up that ISO so high to compensate for the lack of light, that's when you start to get the grainy footage. So avoid that by adding extra lights in your room, make it extra bright so you can lower that ISO setting for the best result. Mistake number 22 is listening to paid product reviews on teleprompter products with the caveat that you have no idea that they're being paid. I have to wonder if most of these people that are getting paid to review that product, are they actually using that product on a day-to-day -day basis? Because what I find is in their reviews, it's so contrary to what I'm experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis that they must not actually have any true experience with the product. Mistake number 23 is bad editing skills. You want to put the purpose of your video first, what people are expecting to see, and then use your introduction to tell them who you are. Hi, Krista here with two, oh wait, not two minutes. Okay, let's start one more. But keep it minimal, a few seconds at most. Don't let your intro drag on for 30 seconds or more. People will click away faster than white on rice. Next, you wanna go into the meat of your video. You want to have that be 90% of your video, delivering on the promise that you made in the purpose of that video that you said in the first few seconds. Just make a ton of videos and Hone in on like one special effect each time that you want to add to your repertoire of video editing skills and you can use that video to master that one skill and then, then you just move on to the next video. That way you're publishing all the time and you're not thinking about too many things at once and you can just keep, continue that momentum. You want to keep it light, funny, charismatic. Don't drag on for too long on one thing. You want to keep it interesting and tight. Finally, at the end, you want a call to action. This could be asking for subscribers. Like, subscribe, and share. Going to your website, leaving a comment, or you could do all three, but I recommend if you start putting these call to actions in, you want at least one at the end of your video 
But when you get really into it, you can start interspersing these call to actions throughout your video to get more interaction with your video. Mistake number 24 is loud background music. You want to keep it minimal. So when you're recording your video, you want to drown out that background noise as much as possible so you don't have to kick up the music in your final production. When you're not speaking though, it can be really powerful to kick up the volume on your music in between scenes. You can have a really magical effect. Here's one of my early attempts, early on in my acting career. Mistake number 25 is flying solo. You can really spruce up your videos by hiring extra talent, people that support your vision. Hi, Krista here with Two Way Mirrors, and today I'm super excited to, to supplement your video and make it engaging. It's so much easier to add humor when you have one other person there to talk to. You're, it's, the flow of the video can just be so much more organic and easy to create when you have two people or more. In this next scene, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Hey guys. Hey guys. Today, we're bringing you exclusive secrets and insider tips on how to get into character and use a teleprompter. Okay, so to wrap things up, if you want to achieve teleprompter mastery, you want to watch this video in full and make it a study, something that you're always perfecting. Besides, there's always room to improve on your acting skills, your presence, your vocality, and everything else that I taught you so far. Do you have any great tips that you'd like to see added? Or perhaps something you'd like to see more detail about? Leave a comment or send me an email with any suggestions you have and I'll include it in my next video. Now that I have you right here, hit that subscribe button because you're going to want to see this. I have a series of videos dedicated to creating fast videos using exclusive techniques no one else is using. I'm going to get out my toys, my high tech toys. When you're creating a video, you need some exclusive content, things that are difficult to get on camera. Bring along a photo booth to all of your adventures. This will allow you to connect with your audience. For instance, if you have a product that you're trying to sell, you could set up a photo booth and set that product on the table for people to take pictures with. Or if you're doing event photography and videography, this is just a really interesting tool to get extra pictures to throw in to your video. I want to talk about setting up your studio space. Now this is for indoor videography. First things first, you need an amazing backdrop, something that really makes you pop. And for my videos, I'm using a black background, but let's take a look around the studio space. This is the only area that has a black background. The rest of the room is white, and that will allow for making the video brighter, to enhance that lighting, to just make everything about your video look better. For my videos, I'm using a black background, which is really awesome for me because I tend to wear things that aren't black, and I want the focus to be on me. Other popular backgrounds include the standard white background. I also really love the textured wood backgrounds and slate, something that looks really industrial. You want to set yourself apart from others doing videos on YouTube or other um, avenues. Personally, I really love a black backdrop. Once you have an amazing backdrop, you want to control the rest of the room. You can add lighting in a variety of ways. One of the most popular on YouTube is using daylight and 
using that to your advantage. But I'm here to tell you that's not the only way to go. So I'm using Halo teleprompters to enhance the lighting of my set, as well as umbrellas with lighting to cast the perfect glow on this particular set. And you can use a variety of other lighting tools to get really nice effects for your video. But the most important thing about lighting is that you want to make sure you have enough of it so your video quality is not grainy. It's getting dark. The lights are coming out. Of course, depending on what your recording device is, this can be more of an issue, but stay tuned for more on that later. I'm making a sequel to this video detailing different recording devices focusing more on indoor videography and low light situations. If you want to check out that video, I'm leaving a card up there for you right now, so check it out or wait until the end. Okay, so we have this product, an outdoor teleprompter mirror, but my conflict was how to capture footage of that product to depict like why you would want to buy it. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you come in. I was too busy reading off this teleprompter. I hit the road. I chose a day to go outside because of course it's outdoor teleprompting. That's something you can't shoot indoors. Like, hello. <laughs> so I strapped on my GoPro and I hit the road to my local botanical gardens so I could get some stellar footage. And I did wait for an overcast day so the pictures and videos that I took would look good. It does some pretty cool things. For example, you can edit the text right on the page. This was in my early days, the early days of my acting career. By the way, here's a little golden nugget I bet you've never heard of before. Mute all of your devices that are in the room and when you're recording. I can't tell you how many times that I've been interrupted during a video by phone calls, little blips on the laptop. Just mute it and you will save yourself a lot of time. Once we had this experience with the outdoor teleprompting and having one other person in our video, we realized, whoa, videos really pop when there's more than one person in the shot. So that's my next tip for you right now. Find someone else to star in the video with you so you can have that awesome dynamic. And it's not just you trying to be funny on camera, which I'm pretty good at, but not everyone is. When you have someone else in the video with you, it's so much easier and more natural to just play off of what they're saying so you can just spice up the feel and the energy of your video like almost instantaneously. The other person in the room that you need to be thinking about when you're creating a video is your cameraman. They are there for one purpose, to make you look good. So you need someone that's passionate they're not just recording it, setting it down, forgetting it, like sucking on their cold brew coffee while they're recording you. They have your best interest. They want to make your video epic, right? So you need to find someone super passionate with a renegade stance that is listening to what you're saying and going in when you're trying to make a bold point about something specific and then backing back up when you're trying to be more general. You know, you want to add emotion to your video and you can only get that if you have a really fantastic camera person to help you out. By the way, special shout out to my cameraman. He is the inspiration for these videos. In fact, he helps me with my lines and I would not get through any video without him. <laughs> you want your cameraman or camera woman to be there to help you take it to the next level. Perhaps you've set a line and they take that moment to pause so you can deliver it again with more emotion and more feeling to just make it amazing.
we have our setup, we have our cameraman, now you need to focus on the main person in the video, and that's you. You want to practice how to sound natural. You want to become the actor or the actress, because there's nothing more weird and like boring than just listening to someone reading off their teleprompter. Uh, get together the technical details on how to research your character before you just dress up like them and fly in the wind. You want to take your experience to the next level by studying acting. Listen to Roger Love or other people that talk about how you're projecting your voice because this is super critical. You want to slow the F down. That's one thing I'm still working on in my videos is just taking one step back and slowing down. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> so back in college I was doing these math conferences where I would take my research and then I'd go present them in front of tons of people. And I was so nervous that like I was just speeding through it. But then my math professor actually gave me this great idea. He said, just slow the F down because what sounds unnatural to you being as you're slowing down, that actually sounds way more natural to the viewer. It doesn't seem weird to people when you slow down. In fact, if you take it like about a half a step down, that actually sounds the most natural. You could even go like slow motion and just see what kind of effect that brings. Add some extra pauses. Use the fluctuation and tonality in your voice to highlight certain words to give it a more robust, complete feeling. You want to think of your voice like you think of music, and that is you want to sing a song to your audience. You want to vary up your tone. There's nothing more boring than someone hitting that same note over and over again. That doesn't make a good music video, and it doesn't make a good regular video either. <laughs> so you want to pull that in. Use the tone. Use all of the vocal range that you have to make your videos better. Make them more interesting. And then, once you've mastered that a little bit, you can start to throw in your personality and your humor to make it truly a personalized experience for your viewers. That's weird, but when you then watch what you just made on a video, you're like, wow, I look fantastic. Along with your voice, you want to be using body language and eye contact. To complete that picture of yourself on video. You want to use these sweeping motions. Use the full frame of your shot to move around. You don't want to be constricted in this little like box tank where like you're not moving outside of it because you're afraid to move. Um, this is something that just comes with experience and maybe watching a few videos on how to use your body to communicate different things. To go along with body language, you want to make sure your eye contact is there. If you're reading a teleprompter or you're reading some lines and you're not looking into the camera, people are going to feel that disconnect. So you really want to keep that eye contact going most of the time in your video so that way your audience actually feels like they're talking to you. They're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you right now. There's nothing more powerful than that. Take it to the ultimate level by getting kind of crazy. You want to 
take it over the top. You want to do like overkill. You want to go hardcore. You just got to get crazy. You got to go LED lights, Christmas gear, like just throw everything out there to the wind and just go for it. Do everything possible to attract every kind of viewer. Cue lightsaber. Watcha! Welcome to the dark. Let your personality shine in your videos by just going out and being crazy, doing whatever you need to do to get more views and to keep people interested in what you're doing. And Chrome has this super special extension called Near This. And all you do is click that button and it flips any website so you can read it off the reflection. things to say, right? Now you just need to record them in a way that people want to keep watching. Let's be real now, it's a competition. More and more people are getting to the pro level. Other YouTubers are getting more and more sophisticated with their video techniques and their energy. You need to compete by using your energy and taking it over the top. Just go all out with it. Get as extreme, take it to the limit. Take it to your utmost limit. Go a little bit out of your comfort zone on every video. Take it over the top by doing some crazy dance moves or using some amazing props to elevate your mood in the video. Let me show you some of my favorite props. My rainbow tutu. Now, this was good for a variety of reasons, but initially I got this for myself to wear in videos, to take the colors over the top, just to make it more vibrant and amazing, and it's just really cool, and it lights up. Now, this one's really good, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. In your videos, you could make Star Wars references, you could be on the light side or the dark side. You can have a battle. Follow me to the dark side. I have cookies. You don't have to be at a rave to use glow toys in your video. knows to build your audience on YouTube, you need to be funny. You need to pull in that comedic element to your videos so you're entertaining, so you're fun to watch. But most people think funny is just an on-off switch where you're telling a joke or either you're funny or you're not. But that's just simply not true. In order to add humor to your videos, you need to know what humor is. Body movement is super funny. Now, have you ever seen those fail videos or where people are dancing around, being crazy on camera, being super outrageous with your body language? Heck yeah, that's funny and it's intentional. Use it in your videos right now. And now for some examples. You could go like 1980s, like disco, disco fever. I would like to be disco fever. Another thing when you're doing body movement is that you want to kind of stretch out your movement. So you want to become part of the entire frame in your camera right now. So you might want to shift from side to side. Just use the entire space to encapsulate your body movement and make it super funny. Whew. 
clothing is another powerful tool in your toolbox to add some comedy to your video. For example, I went to Cedar Point with a dog shirt with laser beam eyes. Literally, a girl crumpled to the ground. And that brings me to my next form of humor. Go into storyteller mode and be concise. Tell your story with the least amount of words and make it funny. Jazz up your stories with hilarious words like crumpled, zucchini, or moist. Suggestive humor is extremely powerful in video creation because you're alluding to something that it might be related to something else that you're not saying out loud. Juvenile comedy is one of my favorites. Have you ever seen American Pie? Hello! <laughs> Every scene in that movie revolves around pranks, name calling, and just being silly. It harkens to the immaturity in each of us. And I know most of you love it. <laughs> Okay guys, in the next few days, I'm releasing a sequel to this video going into more detail on these techniques. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. The power of the insult. <laughs> okay. Biting humor is another really interesting effect you can incorporate in your video. Now, you may or may not want to use this particular form of humor because I don't know, people are sensitive on YouTube, and they'll definitely jump all over it, but if you can somehow insult someone in your video and make it funny, like, it's so biting, like, it's so obviously, like, not really an insult, but it is that you just laugh, use that. Think rap battles of time. The power of awkwardness. That's why dating shows exist. Because first dates are freaking awkward. I use that all the time in my videos. Stand-up comedy is another great one. So you can straight up tell jokes in your video and it'll be awesome, I'm sure. But you don't want to use that exclusively. You need a handbag of comedy tricks so you can be throwing it at the camera at all angles in different ways so you're not using the same exact technique to be funny every time. There is a power in the unexpected. Think magic show where you're looking at something and then something else crazy happens. There is a huge power in leading your audience to believe one thing and then doing something completely different at the end. Sound effects are key to creating comedic moments and music. You also want to be thinking about music as a sound effect. Don't just put music into your video for the sake of having background music. You want to pick out like several different songs to put in your video, spicing it up, using it in shorter intervals to convey a deeper dramatic effect. Use workout scenes in your video to convey different emotions like motivation, confidence, all the way to downright hilarious. Just like you would use dance in a video. Okay guys, I know you want more of this. Hit that subscribe button right now for the subscriber only content that I will be sending your way in the next video. Go to telepromptermirror.com for my complete and ultimate guide on video content creation.
Okay guys, I want to hear from you. Leave a comment below with any questions you have and I will be there to answer them right away. By the way, if you want to check out our products, i.e. get this display, the presidential, executive, anything that I've shown you in this video, go to our website, telepromptermere.com. By the way, I'm Krista, adventure videographer and gadget guru. And I'm not 5,000.